It's time to welcome on our guest, my favorite by far, a Broadway star, Benita Hamilton. so excited to introduce you all to today's guest. Today we are talking with Benita Hamilton, aka Benita Hamilton Caesar, aka the long-standing Shinzi in Disney's The Lion King on Broadway, also known as the most fashionable and loudest Shinzi in the Disney franchise. Welcome to the show, Benita. We are so excited to have you. How are you doing today? <laughs> How dare? How dare? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out the best way to introduce you so that you would do exactly what you just did. Mouth right. on the floor. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so uh what are you what are you what are you drinking today? <clears throat> oh girl, it's wine time somewhere. It's wine time. Amen. In the world. It's and somewhere in the world. With a cup. Oh, I like that. The Real Housewives of West Orange, New Jersey. Now you have to tell the people where I live now. Wait a you minute. just you told everybody where you live. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. I'm I'm drinking some ginger ale, some uh some some ginger ale. And uh in 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 one of my favorite cups that you got me when we first started together for Christmas is my you first Christmas. That cup? You did. Oh, I love an elephant. I know you do. I do too. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Okay. So let's start with what is on everyone's minds. When you got the call, or actually we didn't get a call, did we? We got a press release in, uh, in March of last year about we wouldn't be turning, we're turning back to work. Right. What were you doing? What were you up to? And what was going through your mind? Okay, so it wasn't really a press release. I was in my son's room, my son Noah, who is 12 years old, and his room is was looking like a 12-year-old's room, honey. And I was watching the TV, and Governor Cuomo came on, and he said uh, <laughs> gatherings of 500 or more are prohibited. And I said, now, wait a minute, now, how is that going to work? So I immediately called our stage manager, Ron Vodica, Dodo here. I said, Ron, how they going to only let 500 people in the theater? Because <laughs> the show must go on. Because <laughs> the show must go on. I've seen that show go on through snowstorms with 12 feet of snow, through hurricanes, through everything. The show never stops. The sh show never ends. The mm -hmm. show never, the curtain never comes, never comes in. So I'm like, now Ron, Ron, what does this mean? What does this mean? How is this going to work? Are y'all going to refund what, <laughs> a thousand people their money? What's going on? How are we going to do this? It never occurred to me mm -hmm. that we were not, that March 11th was the last time we would don the stage. It never occurred to me. I was like, and was in my scrubs. And I was like, ooh, well, <clears throat> all right. Well, let's, and Ron was like, uh, stand by. Uh, you know, he's very, <laughs> he's very bold. He's and, so you know, bold. He was like, uh, stand by and um, I'll let you know what that means. And I was <laughs> like, okay. And I would, and remember, we have been bumping around in the dressing room, right? And, you know, you know how the cast talks. It was like, whoa, wouldn't it be fierce if we got two weeks off? Or mm -hmm. wouldn't it be fierce if we, you know, got two months off? Now, remember, I was, me and my dear friend, I love her like I love cooked food in a pandemic. <laughs> Angelica, <laughs> Angelica Edwards, mm -hmm. who is, uh, she is like the super swing extraordinaire. She is, you know. She's amazing. I mean, she's like she's Mother amazing. Earth. Yeah. She's like Mother Earth. <laughs> and, she was like, and, and I love her to death. And we got into a verbal altercation. About no. I don't remember that. Girl. <laughs> No, I'm joking you know, with you. I'm you joking with you. Me. I'd rather fight than eat. But okay, so, yeah. so I was like, Angelica, she was like, oh, it would be so fierce if we could get two weeks off. And I was like, 
Angelique, you don't want that. And she said, why don't I want that? I said, you don't want that, girl. Mm. Well, she got what she wanted. We are almost, in March, it'll be a year. Yeah. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I can't okay, believe it that, either. That was the that was the long answer to the short question. No, so but the, this is going to go. That's the, <laughs> that was the answer I wanted. Because <laughs> honestly, you know, Bradley and I were sitting up in makeup with Brenda and Elizabeth and Mikey and we were joking and stuff. And I was like, look, y'all, look, y'all, if we make it through the weekend, I'll be shocked. I'm telling you, we're going to be out for at least a month. Right. Cause they I were just... shutting down the backstage tours. They were shutting down, giving autographs. Mm -hmm. We walked in, we couldn't touch the doors. There was someone opening the doors and pushing the elevator buttons for us. I was like, well, now I like this, but uh, what's going on here? <laughs> You know, not knowing. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> the day you came into the dressing room and, you know, watching the news is like my favorite pastime almost, which oh, is mm -hmm. my weird obsession. Excuse me. But you came in that one day with those gloves. I did. And you were like, this is about to be serious. And I was like, <laughs> what you talking about? And we were like, okay, Adrian, what you talking about? You know how I do. <laughs> you do me like that. You do me like I that. I am. I am. I am like that. I am like that. I admit. And, and, and you had those nitrate gloves. She yes, said, I did. Says that you have to have the, these nitrate gloves. Guys, take some. And and then we, and I was like, this is where. And then uh, one of the porters brought us those industrial strength Clorox, Clorox. Wipes to wipe everything down. And I was like, this is serious. I said, well, let me just get me some. And then I stopped taking public transportation into work. I started driving into work and taking it more serious, just paying attention, you know, thinking that it would, you know, not be as serious as it is. I'm very grateful that the theater took the precautions that it did because then we heard, remember, we heard that the usher, that usher, at the booth theater. theater. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next to us. Yeah. And I started freaking out. Do you remember that day in between shows? We will not discuss that. We we don't have to talk about that in detail. But um <laughs> I think I think I think our panic level went from zero to like 80 in very in a matter of an hour. What? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the germaphobe in all of us came out pretty quickly. Listen, but thank goodness we haven't been, I haven't been sick. No one in my family has been sick. I've gotten on their ever loving last <laughs> nerve. Did you wash your hands? Come in and wash your hands. Take your shoes off. Don't wear your shoes in my house. Did you, did you wipe this down? I'm going to wipe this down. I wipe doorknobs. I spray the microband. I spray the Lysol, all the mail. Listen, I'm not look, playing games with it. Look, because it's everywhere and it's, it's mutating. Everywhere. So that brings me to my next question for you is what have you been up to other than, you know, frantically cleaning your house and driving your family <laughs> crazy? <laughs> what have you been up to for these 10 months? I mean, you, you've been working consistently for so long. This has to be the first stretch of time that you've been off like this. So what, what are you up to? I've been working consistently for 16 years, eight shows a week, one day off. Mm -hmm. So I have been up to what when the when the pandemic started, you know, I decided I was going to organize my house. So I organized mm -hmm. um, my son was struggling a little bit in school and I felt like I needed to um, address that. I addressed it. He came out on top with an A. So I was a sixth grade teacher at the beginning of the pandemic. Come on, I, Noah. Come on, Noah. <laughs> on a roll now and i'm very proud of that oh that's um, awesome yes yes I did, I did my job <laughs> the, boy can, the boy can read and write amen <laughs> praise amen. god okay, let's drink to that drink to it hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so then i um I started doing voiceovers i started mm -hmm. auditioning um really my agents have kept me going with the voiceovers, uh, the ADR, the looping. It's been really wonderful, um, you know, and uh, yeah, 
Uh, oh, I'm writing a book. What? Yeah. I thought I told you. You didn't tell me that? No. So is this like a memoir? Like what is, can you, can you, can you talk about it or? I can talk about it. Okay. A companion book uh, to my professor, uh, Dr. Tommy Tania Stewart, to her. It's a companion book to her dissertation on Frank Silvera's American Theater of Being. Oh, see, this is, this is your master's degree coming out right here. Cause you just said a lot of things that <clears throat> I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't do me. Don't do me. Look, <laughs> I was a vocal performance music major. That's wonderful. So- <laughs> All of that's great. All of that's wonderful. Yes. So I'm working on that with a group of, um, a group of colleagues that are passionate about the, uh, the acting technique of being. Mm. Yes. Um, and I also, you know, I guess I can't sit still. I also got my real estate license and I sold my first house. See, that's amazing, hustle. Benita. I feel like, I feel like hustle man from the fifth floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, work. You better hustle everything. So you're doing your voiceover, the ADR, you got a real estate license, and you are writing a book. Mm-hmm. That is incredible. That's oh, and the last thing, it kind of just fell in my lap. And I signed an NDA, so I can't really speak about it. Mm-hmm. But I'm producing a huge iconic project. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's sort of like, okay, yes. You, it's yes <laughs> and. You say yes until you have to say no, but I haven't had to say no yet. So I've empowered myself to know that I can do this. Yeah. And it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Oh, I'm I'm ready. With whenever you, I know you got an NDA, so you can't say anything. But whenever you can, I can't wait. Yes. I'm I'm so excited about that. I think that's the really fun thing about. I mean, in the midst of everything going on uh, yeah. the past ten months, the really fun thing has been watching our peers and our colleagues really uh, blossom and tackle new projects and, and new parts of themselves. It's all about the pivot. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I've also been doing a lot of cooking, a lot of baking. I make Kool-Aid for my family. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How's that going again? Show me that again. <laughs> I make Kool-Aid for my family. <laughs> <laughs> But I know you haven't been making no Kool-Aid, though. You've been making cakes. Mm-mm, cakes and sangria, girl. <laughs> That's the other part, though. Because when we're working, we don't drink. We You can't drink. No. But no. <laughs> it was like... No. No. The, the shackles came off with that. And it kind of went... I kind of went kind of crazy with the drinking. I've since then cooled it off. But like... That's, it's interesting when you, I haven't, <laughs> and, and that's, and that's your business, right? As, as, as mama Tad was like, cause that's my business. That's your business. But it's interesting though, when you, when you work in this type of profession that you are so disciplined so that you can show right. up to work every day. And there's right. something about, uh, being freed up from that. That really just lets them, you know, the cattle ran free, you know, right, right. for a while. And right. maybe continue to, because we still don't know when we're going back to work. Maybe we're going back to work in, in uh, July at the earliest. Maybe they, some people are saying the fall. We don't know. Right. Exactly. So, you know, I, you know, when I was at work, I, hey. You, you know don't drink. Say, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't do me. What the- <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Ah, thank you. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Thank you very uh-huh. much. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about The Lion King 
being your Broadway debut and what that process was like when you auditioned. I know you were ta- you were juggling a couple of things during that time, and I want I want to hear about that that full story because I've heard you mention it here and there, but I want the nitty gritty. Woo, child! All right, here we go. So. Um, I booked the Lion King two months out of graduate school. I went to graduate school at Brandeis University. I uh, was working on Ain't Misbehaving at Capitol Rep up in Albany. Mm -hmm. And my agent called me and she said, I have an audition. I have two auditions for you. Uh, Can you come down on your day off? Okay. So I said, sure. Now that's a four hour drive between Albany and Brooklyn. So I uh, came down and anybody that knows that if you're driving um, between Albany and Brooklyn during the summer, people in New York like to go upstate. So the traffic coming back on a Sunday to Brooklyn was horrible. So I got in there. I learned my lines, learned everything that I needed to know. Um, And the two shows that I had to audition for were The Color Purple and The Lion King on that Monday. So oh I was gosh. like, oh, okay. So the first one I went in, I was really, really, full disclosure, really wanting to do the color purple because everybody in New York at that time wanted to be in that show. So I cannot, I can if I'm being honest with myself, I have to say, and if I'm being honest with everybody, I was really concentrating on that. I got to the casting director's office and I had on a a halter top with a skirt and some stilettos. Okay, first of all, I was the only person that had never done the show when I auditioned. So it was, I was in a room full of shinsies. And luckily one of my friends uh, from college was sitting there and he was there with his his then girlfriend who is now his wife and I won't name any names mm-hmm. but it may it gave me a level of comfort until I asked this question mm-hmm. I said oh I said so I said how are you so nice to meet you I said so are you off book for this and she looked at me and she looked me up and down she said honey I've done over a thousand performances of this uh character. I originated the role in the blank company. She said, of course I'm off book. Uh, well, you know what? You always come up with a response later, right? What did you say in that moment? In that moment, I said, oh, okay, girl. Okay. All right. Uh, Good for you. All right. I was trying to be nice and I was, uh, mind you, this was my audition for the Lion King, okay? And the, I saw the other girl in the corner and she was going through the song and going through everything. And then I heard her go in and when I tell you she ripped it, she ripped it. She she knocked it out of the park, right? Mm-hmm. So then I had to go in and, 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 um, and oh my gosh, I love him so much. Uh, Mark Brandon looked at me and he said, okay, first of all, Shinzi ain't cute. And I was like, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> so I took, I, I, so he said, kick those shoes off. He said, and let's get to work. So he said, do you know the bonsai part of the song? And I said, uh, no, I, you told me to learn the shinzy part. He said, okay, well, let's just, let's just go with it. So we sang it. And then we went through the lines and I was holding my paper and it's okay to hold your paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, he looked at me. And he said, you know what? I'm going to call you back. And I said, oh, oh, okay. (laughs) Right. So he called me back and he said, but when you come back, be off book. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) He said, be off book. And I said, all right. Okay. So I left there and I went to the Color Purple audition. Right. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it was that hustle. You going from one audition to the next, that hustle it's mentality. I went in there, I sang that song. I was who was it? Uh, it was for Sophia. Mm-hmm. I walked in, I did it. They said, you know what? We're gonna call you back. I was like, oh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so I got on the train. I was not familiar with the uh, New York City subway system, but I got back on that three train, got down to Brooklyn, changed into some khakis, a white T-shirt and some red Chuck Taylors. And I pulled my hair up. I had braids at that time. I pulled my hair up into some Nala knots. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got back over there uh, uh, to that callback audition. I went in a callback and it was for uh, the creative team. And I had to sing. I had to sing my song, which is River Deep Mountain High. That's the song I auditioned off of. And they said, boy, she's not shy, is she? Cause is that Clem? <laughs> who was that? No, it, <laughs> who it was. It was Stephen Minning. Okay, I don't know season it was. Okay. No, mm -mm. Oh, I told you I've been in it 16 years. Mm -hmm. So so they said, uh, we'd like to call you back for the puppet audition. I said, okay. <laughs> so I went, My at that time, my mother-in-law worked at uh, um, 1199, which was connected to the Port Authority on 42nd Street. I went over there and I was like, mommy, mommy. You know, and she was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. And she walked me around her office, whatever. She gave me a little piece of peppermint and said, good luck going back over there. I came back over, puppet audition. I put that puppet on. I said, oh, 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 oh. And you know, the puppets are custom for our bodies. Mm -hmm. So this was a, a puppet that was not meant for me. <laughs> so <clears throat> long story short, I was so terrible in the puppet. He told me to take the puppet off and just crawl on the floor. And I did. And he said, okay, thank you very much. And I got to that door. I said, woo, child, this ain't a, this is a gig I ain't got to get, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what in the, what is this? What in the wild <laughs> kingdom is this? You know? <laughs> so, okay, so I got back to Brooklyn. I had to get in my car and get back to Albany. This was Tuesday. Oh, I had a callback, a work through session with Miss Linda Twine. Wow. Now, do, do you know the show? Uh, you know, Ain't Misbehaving. Have you ever done that show? No, I've seen it. Austin's okay. done it. I've seen it, okay. but I, yeah. So Austin will understand this. <laughs> so the bane of my existence was Handful of Keys where you had to do the, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. That, that part, right? Mm -hmm. I could never get the notes. I don't know what it was about that, but I got that just a, <laughs> <laughs> So before I got to Albany, I uh, I had to stop and do this work through sessions. So I packed my car, get ready to drive back. I had to find parking in the city. And Miss Twine said, mm, it says here, that you doing handful of keys, you playing Charlene. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, oh, she said, uh, you playing Charlene. I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, let's do a little bit of handful of keys. I said, what? <gasps> I said, uh, I, I said, okay. She said, do you have the sheet music for that? I said, oh, no, ma'am, I do not have that in my book. She said, well, let me see if I can tink it out. Child. She's got to tinking and I, I got to tinking right along with her. Anyway, she said, all right, thank you so much. And I said, <laughs> thank you. It was such a pleasure to meet you because she is legendary. Mm -hmm. I said, it was such a pleasure to meet you. And thank you for this opportunity. I got in my car. I got on the FDR. And my agent called me and she said, uh, so they want to cast you for the world premiere of the color purple. I was like, yes, driving. I was on such a high on the way back to Albany. I was speeding. I got pulled over by a state trooper. And I told him, I was like, please, please. You know, I was begging and pleading not to get a ticket. And I told him what I had just been through. He said, okay, I'm going to give you warning. And one day I hope to see you on the Broadway stage. I pulled, no, no lie to you. As soon as I pulled into Albany, into my uh, apartment complex, I got a call from my agent and she said, you have to make a choice. She said, 
they want you for the Lion King. And I, I, it, I just didn't understand. I couldn't process it. So I, I thought it was maybe for the tour. I didn't think it was for Broadway. I didn't even know. D- Dodo, you know, my brain goes. <laughs> and so um, I, I got sick because it was like the stress of it all. I had to choose one. You know, we were trying to, you know, they wanted to start Bonsai and Shinzi together. I wanted to go and do the color purple and then start the rehearsal process later, you know, because it it premiered in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I remember that. theater, And they were like, no. And they wanted me for one of the church ladies. Mm. So I was like, well, uh, I said, I'm going to have to, yeah, I'll call Dr. Stewart, and who is my mentor. And I said, Dr. Stewart, what should I do? She said, Lion King. I said, um, but Doc, it's my chance to originate a role on Broadway. I mean, in a world premiere of a show. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. She said, Lion King. I said, but Dr. Stewart, I said, I would be a replacement in the Lion King. She said, Lion King. All right. Bye-bye. Call me when you are. Sign your contract. Bye-bye. And hung up on me. So I said, okay. So Lion King, it was, I have not regretted one moment of signing that contract, of making that choice, because guess what? Six months later, I was on a beach in Mexico. I received two phone calls. One of the calls was my agent saying they wanted me to do the pre-Broadway workshop for The Color Purple. Wow. So I was like, wow. That is, Benita, that is such an amazing story. Like that doesn't happen for you to get two offers in the same day, for you to make that choice, for you to be satisfied with that choice and for it still not to be, the the, the doors weren't closed on it. You know, like it's just blessings on blessings. That's that's such an amazing story. And Adrian, here's a caveat. I had a dollar and 63 cent in the bank. Wow. No, I know where, I know what that's like. Oh, okay. okay. So, so when did you start? Okay. I have a, I have a couple questions okay. because you said you were two months out of grad school and you already had an agent. So how did yeah. you do that? How did, how did you do that? So my school at the time, we had two showcases. We had a showcase in Boston and we had a showcase in um, in New York. Actually, at the, in our showcase was at the Producers Club, and every which is on 45th Street. You know where that is? I don't. It's, oh, girl, it's on 45th Street between, I think it's between 8th and 9th. Okay, yes. okay. And every time I pass by there going to Chipotle, i just always you know tip my hat to that place so my agent sent her assistant to our showcase Mm -hmm. and her assistant insisted that she meet me and um and i went in and i met with her and and it was kismic i had i had a, a meeting with uh another agency and in that meeting they were concentrating on someone else an, another girl that was my type mm-hmm. and the whole meeting they talked about her so i knew that they weren't for me no oh, yeah and how she was will smith's it girl <coughs> excuse me uh-uh. i'm, I'm mm-hmm. negative uh- <laughs> Well, you at home, so we're all safe anyway. I'm negative. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a little sip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I was like, oh, I know that's not that's not for me. And I and I had an audition for Beehive at the Kennedy Center. Okay. And I went into this aid saying, well, I just got called back, and it was just an open call. But I, you know, me not knowing anything, I said, well, I have a call back for Beehive at the Kennedy Center. You know, mm-hmm. and anyway, they they liked me. We jailed. I liked them, and I felt like they were going to work really hard for me. And and that they did mm-hmm. within two months of signing with them. I think that that really matters because you know 
I've got a couple subscribers that ask questions like that. Well, how do you get an agent and all that? And I know folks are so focused on having an agent, Yes, but it matters more when you like your agent, they like you, they believe in you, they want to vouch for you. And also you want them to represent you well, you know, but there's so many, there's so much more to it than just checking off a box. Like it, it needs to be a good fit. Relationships are important in this business. Mm-hmm. Relationships. So you don't get lost in the sauce. So you need to you need to know what works for you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I had a couple more questions for you. How are you? How are you on time? You feel good? Are we filming? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you if you feel good to keep talking for a little bit before we do our, our you feel good? Okay, okay. Um, okay, okay, good. Uh, I was, I, <laughs> I'm curious about what it was like to, um, to do a master's uh, program, a graduate program in acting and if you felt like it was necessary and it helped propel your career or if you could go back in time you'd be like nah I don't really need to do this you know what was that like for you so I am a proponent for education Mm -hmm. right so I would say get all of the education that you can get stay in class I feel like it I I feel like it filled up my toolbox even more I was equipped it helped me, it fortified what I felt inside. Mm. And it it taught me how to present, how to, you know, I can walk into any room and present myself well. You know, it taught me to be the best representation of myself. Uh, you know, I, I would I would tell you, even now, we take class. Mm-hmm. We're always trying to stay one step ahead. We're always trying to hone in on the craft. We take class. Mm-hmm. That's that's what smart actors do because our craft is ever evolving, mm-hmm. ever changing, you know? So, yeah, if you can go to school, and I went to school on a, a full scholarship, full ride, graduate school. Work. Ooh. Work. Full ride with a full fellowship. Who, who wouldn't take advantage of that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I wasn't ready to just you know, hit the ground running when I finished uh, college, you know, uh, undergraduate. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to graduate school. I wanted to uh, be able to embrace the classics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Shakespeare, you know, I like to tell people that I am classically trained. Mm -hmm. I I think I've heard you say that before. Oh, sure. (laughs) You you didn't know? I am classically trained. (laughs) But I hear you though, you 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 uh appreciated that foundation and it's something you can still stand on now, it sounds like. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. I have I'm curious what it's like because you have you have two beautiful children, Nia, 15, mm-hmm. and Noah is 12 now. 12. Yes, Noah's 12. Is. Now Nia is a young performer yes. and you kind of, she has an advantage. She has a mom who is a performer, which is, right. wasn't your ministry, right? Like that's, that's not how you came up. It's different when you have parents who aren't performers and your little performing spirit and your little heart just wants to, you know, soar. And your parents are like, what are you doing? Right. So Nia has you nurturing her, bringing her up. And with you knowing that that's what she wants to do, mm-hmm. like, um, how do you navigate that? Are are you do you want her to be a former or do you want her to choose something else? Actually, Nia wants to be an aerospace engineer. What? Okay, this is news to me. Oh girl. No, no, no. She wants to be an aerospace engineer. She will that is the first I said, Nia, what do you want to do? I want to be an aerospace engineer. I'm like, girl, who are you? That's incredible. That's that's what she wants to do. She loves the theater and she loves performing, Mm -hmm. but she wants to be an aerospace engineer. Now, when she does do her performing and she she just did Sound of Music with Kids Theater um, and she played Maria, you know, and she doesn't really allow me to give her too much feedback or help Mm -hmm. her. 
Um, but I think I posted like she had to sing for Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill at a rally for her. She had to sing um, the Negro National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she she asked me to help her with that. And I did help her with it. Uh, but then, you know, it was cold out there. She got stage fright and she kind of froze a little bit. And I just jumped right in with that verse and she she heard it. You know, I think you can hear it on the video on the page. It's so funny. <laughs> I, I was like, you know, but I'm a mama bear and I want her to do well in whatever she decides to do. There is no pressure for her to be a performer. That is something that she loves to do. But mm -hmm. she also wants to be that engineer. And I'm going to encourage her to do that. I love that. I yeah. love that. I think she's going to be amazing. Thank you, Adrienne. Okay, so we are getting into the final round. We like to call this the lightning round, where oh. I ask you a couple of, like, a question, boom, 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 and you give whatever answer comes to mind. They oh. are ridiculous questions. They run the gamut. So <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun because, you know, I have no filter, zero filter. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. <laughs> do, you, do you need to take a, let's, let's take a sip, get ready, to, uh, <clears throat> lubricate it. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. okay uh who has been your most favorite celebrity that's visited the show michael jackson oh my god okay and your least favorite celebrity <laughs> terry cruz oh okay 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 would you rather rehearse for eight hours mm -hmm. no breaks or do four shows in one day what? Neither. Nope. You got to pick. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Oh, God, Adrian. <laughs> that is a nightmare. Um, uh, who has a landline that rings? Ring, and ring. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> And ain't nobody going to answer it because I'm the only one that answers the line. Saved by the bell because you don't even like that. Uh, do you want to go? Do you need to go get it? Uh-uh. Oh. You want me to go get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what? Just pick it up and hang it up. <laughs> it's right here. Oh, my God. Nobody has a landline anymore. It's right there. He don't even know where the phone is, child. <laughs> hang it up. Hang it up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So we go with neither with that question. Yeah, neither. I can't even answer that. I can't even, <laughs> that ain't even in the spe That would give me a stroke. <laughs> God, no. Okay. <laughs> if you could spend one hour with anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? Ooh. Uh famous or not famous? Anyone in the world. Ooh. Just one person? Just one. Okay, it's this is a lot. I'm answering like Adrian. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. I don't really have an answer, honey. Um, <laughs> there are so many people. Uh you know who it would be? It would be my father. He left. He, my father passed away of ALS when I was seven years old. And I just want to hear him say, well done. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Did you, that? did you feel that? I felt it. I felt it. I really did. No, I really did. I know we joke a lot, but I did. Okay. Back to the lightning round. Oh, what mm. meal would you eat if you could eat it every day? I didn't oh, really say that the way I wanted to. I'm, I'm supposed to say, say it again. What meal would you eat every day if you could? Because <laughs> you know I'm very habitual, right? Oh, so you already do this. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm extremely habitual. You know. I know. I know you are. Same coffee. Place, same coffee. From the same place. Same matcha tea. Put your bag and, down. Same place. It's put my purse down in the same place, same soup from Mr. Men's Starlight Deli before I start the show. 
So, okay, ask me something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Cornbread and biscuits. Baby, both. <laughs> you can't say both. <laughs> Lasagna or spaghetti? Lasagna. Okay, fair, fair. Cake or pie? Cake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Austin, he's fine. I like pie. Oh God, Austin. Cake, <laughs> uh, cake. <laughs> okay. You gotta answer this one now. Okay. 50, 50 push-ups or fifty squats. Fifty squats. Cause you know you got legs. Okay, this one's fun. This one's fun. Okay. At the at the Lion King, anybody, okay. it could be cast, crew, stage management, whatever. Okay. Who would who would you slap? Who would you hug? And who would you go to lunch with? At the Lion King. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Is it, <laughs> is it a fun slap or is it, it a however you want it to, to ride, yeah. Okay, who would I slap? Who would I hug? And uh -huh. who would you go to lunch with? I would slap L. Stephen Taylor. <laughs> I, I would then hug L. Stephen Taylor. <laughs> and then we would go to lunch. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I could, I could, I could see all of that happening. I don't want to be there for the aftermath, but maybe it'll be all right if you take him to lunch aftermath. afterwards. He knows what he he would get slapped for. You. <laughs> well, Medina, this has been so much fun. I can't thank you enough for being our first guest. Do you want to stay for the curtain, the curtain call? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Benita's gonna stay for the curtain call, y'all. You can check that out if you are a subscriber and. Now, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything that you're doing that you want our listeners or subscribers to know about? Ah, uh, yeah, no. I <laughs> want to encourage your subscribers mm -hmm. in the audition process. I want them to be encouraged and I want them to know no doesn't mean never. It means not right now. And if you repeat that and if you go in the room and be the best representation of yourself, then you will you will win every time. No doesn't mean never. It means not right now. And you know what? Pick one thing that you want to work on. If you want to work on being off book and knowing your lines, if you want to work on filling the space, if you want to work on your breath, if you do that in your auditions and you accomplish it, then you won. That's it. Amen. I love that because we really do get caught up in booking the job and letting that yeah. be, I don't know, an answer to our value or our worth. And it's just right. really not. It's really it's not. not. It's mm -mm. not. You you value yourself. You value your work. It's all about the work. Mm -hmm. Do the work and, 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 and it will be rewarding for you. Absolutely. I love that, Vanita. Vanita, you have been such an amazing guest. We are going to do the playoff. And then I'm going to see you back for that curtain call. Girl, it was like dressing room time.